All right. Yay. Oh, please don't start echoing. Okay, I'm good. All right, welcome to our lovely team call on uh, 13th of October, 2015. I'm um, just gonna go through real quick the people who brought in coaches the last two weeks because we- uh Oh. <laughs> we're getting bombed. He said we're getting bombed. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's ridiculous. All right, Lisa Langston. Alicia Otis, Kim Adams, Catherine Plotkin, Sarah Axelm, Melissa Belt, Carolyn Brockman brought in three coaches this last couple weeks. So that's awesome. She's our top recruiter this week. Amy Early, Jackie McGuire. Um, I brought in a couple. Stephanie Hall uh, brought in two. Josh, Joshua Sofa, Alina Bell, Laura LaRosa, uh, Mary Ellen Jiro, Allison Erlenbush, Susan Kale, and um, and Jason Croxford actually put in a coach under Derek, so that was cool. Um, we have nobody in Success Club yet, but Terry Ryan is close. She has oh, I <laughs> she's in the lead. You're in the lead. <laughs> um, cup, just a couple of announcements. We have, we have 22 minute hardcore that was announced at Summit. There's some information in the back office about that. But like I said in the team, don't let that overshadow our launch for Hammer and Chisel because that's going to be huge. It's going to be a huge launch. There's going to be a lot of people that want that because, oh my gosh, and the results I'm seeing are insane. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. I mean, I know it's a 60 day program versus autumn 20, 21 day, but it's mind blowing. Um, and then the cafe latte shakeology coming out. And then um, just a little plug about super Saturday. I put a post out in the team about that, but make sure you guys are there. I know all of you are on this call are probably going, but <laughs> if you can, I mean, even if you have to drive, you know, a ways it is well worth worth it. Networking with other coaches live in person, there's just something magical about it. So it really helps your business. Um, I'm doing something new this week. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> and I want each of you to tell me, I'm gonna go around the room and just tell me one victory you had this week. Something good that happened this week, because I want to hear the stories of something good that happened to you this week. So who wants to go first? Me. It can be anything. It doesn't have to be business related. Just we want to be celebrating everything good. Can you hear me? Barely. Hello, hello. Catherine, can you hear me or no? Catherine, is that you? Yeah, can, can you hear me? Uh-huh, I can hear you. There's just a picture up where you normally are, but that's okay. I can hear you. Okay, so this week something good was that um, we got away for two days just with um, my husband and the kids after not being together for like three or four weeks. So we got some quiet time away from everybody. So that's my little victory. That's awesome. I love it. Thank you. Terry, what happened to you good this week? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> um, I woke up really, really bad today, like grumpy. And um, I just, oh, I was just anxious and mad at myself. So I read that half of that GoPro book. Awesome. And um, I reached out to more people and I actually, I don't know, I just ended up having a good day. I went to my son's baseball game. I probably would have skipped it because of the way I was feeling. <laughs> I normally would have in the old Terry days, but uh -huh. I didn't. I went. Awesome. So, and then I went to the doctor last week and my blood pressure was 114 over 60. Oh it hasn't God. been that, I know it hasn't been that low in a long, long, long time. 
That so that's so good. Amazing. Yay! That's it. <laughs> All right, Dorothy, you're unmuted. What what uh what happened good for you this week? Um, I got to spend the whole day with my kiddo yesterday, so that was fun. And she said it was the best day ever. Aww. So that was a lot of fun. And um, my best friend, I don't know if you guys saw, I posted a before and after picture of her. Um, she's like so excited right now about the weight that she has lost. And she was in our last challenge group uh-huh. and she lost 10 pounds just in the 21 days of the last challenge group. Is she a and she's in, the, she's in the one that's starting next week, too. So she's really excited about that. Is she, is she a coach already? She was a coach, and then she canceled. But she's going to Super Saturday with me. <laughs> okay, I was going to say, oh, my God, our transformation is insane. So I have a strong feeling I can get her back in there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I thought I recognized yeah. her name, but I'm like, huh, yeah. I'm not friends with her yet. So, <laughs> yeah, I was just curious. Yeah. That is yeah, awesome. she's That's loving right. it now. She's yeah. she's definitely much more into the whole transformation, getting back healthy, and all that than she was when she originally signed up. So, right. It I think like, it's gonna be good. Sounds like she's way more confident than she was. Oh, oh, um, absolutely. She's, so, she's uh, more uh, confident than she's ever been in her whole life. I've really been stressing confidence this week. Confidence yes. is big. <laughs> it's a great thing. Need more. Need to be more confident. Okay. Um, Shelly. Hold on. I was trying to unmute myself. Okay. Um, <laughs> probably the four days that Chris had off that we were up at Wolf Lodge and got to be together mm-hmm. as a family. But um, more recent, probably the phone call that I got from Nicole today. Super positive, lifted me up, and it's just like totally what I needed to hear because I've been lacking confidence. So (laughs) it it really helps. So hopefully when I go to bed tonight, things will be different tomorrow because I, like Terry, I kind (laughs) of been waking up on the wrong side of bed. (laughs) Did you all set your phone reminders for the morning? be more confident yeah <laughs> good yes and it's over there on my whiteboard too so I see it when I walk by <laughs> and I tell myself that 50 times a day as I'm talking to everybody so yeah it's a good thing Sherry good <laughs> mm-hmm. have a tattooed right, on Heather. my wrist what happened good for you this week girlfriend I can, I can hear, hear you now. Can you hear me now? <laughs> uh, I got to see my niece this week. She's down for a whole week. That's awesome. And I've been doing my personal development. So it's lighting there for a while. She breaking up. Yeah. She, I, I, I didn't hear you said at the end that you were breaking up. But it sounded good. <laughs> I've seen Jennifer. I've seen you posting some stuff on Facebook, and I've seen you working out, and that is so awesome. I love every bit of it. I'm like, try to like it all. I try to, you know, stalk all of your pages and like all your stuff just to try to get it seen. <laughs> but yeah, you're doing a great job. So keep up the great work. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. Let me do much. Yeah, without further ado. I guess. Here's Derek's story. Yeah, so anyway, some of you guys already know what happened, and uh, some of you don't. So some of you asked me to say. So what <laughs> happened was, so we went to Los Angeles in January for a leadership thing. And, uh, you know, it was real nice, all paid for. It's a great trip. So this naive small town Ohio boy had some time to kill while she was in an, an elite that I wasn't allowed to go to. And uh, so she's in a meeting. And I'm like, it's like 11 in the morning. I'm like, I guess I'll just have a couple of drinks here at the bar. I mean, what else am I going to do? I'm on vacation. You know, it's beautiful out. So I'm sitting there and I'm getting drunk or anything. Just, you know, had like two, 
few drinks, and I was sitting there drinking, and I uh, I speak Spanish also, and the, the bartender was Sonia, so I started speaking Spanish with her, and she's like, oh, you know, a gringo that speaks Spanish, so we're talking back and forth. She really enjoyed it, and then, uh, so it was just me and her there, because 11 in the morning. This is at the main hotel bar in the middle. Next thing I know, this uh, guy comes up. Apparently, he knows Sonia, too. He's a regular. They start talking, and, you know, he's kind of sitting right by me. I mean, there's one empty seat between us, but, you know, he's talking to Sonia. Me and Sonia has been chatting it up, and it's just us three there. So, naturally, him and I start talking, right? And uh, so he seemed like a real nice guy. He's like an high-end accountant, you know, has asked some – it's actually it was beneficial. I was asked some, some uh, questions about write-offs and so forth for our types of business. So uh, it was a good conversation, and finally I said, it was like 12 or 12.30, I said, man, I'm getting kind of hungry. I, I got to do lunch. I says, uh, I got to find some place to eat. And the guy, he says, uh, hey, do you, do you like Italian? I'm like, oh, I'm like, that's my favorite. I'm like, well, why do you ask? He said, oh, my God. he said, like a half a block away, he says, the best Italian place in L.A. He said, I got to take you. Uh, he said, you'll love it. Or he said, I can walk you over is what he said. I said, oh, okay. So that's great. Thanks. And uh, so me and him walk over. We sit down, have our lunch. And uh, so we're sitting there uh, walking. You know, he's talking to me, and I'm like, it's a little strange, I guess, you know. And we're walking back, and then he's like, hey, uh, he says, I got to ask you. He said, just, you know, I just got to ask. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, wait for it. He says, uh, you, you ever back for the other team? I said, huh? He said, back for the other team. I said, what are you talking about? He's like, you know, you know what I mean. He's like, because the whole time I was talking about how great Sherry is. We're getting married in June. So, I mean, he was very well aware that, you know, I had a fiance at the time. He's like, well, do you ever bat for the other team? I said, bat for the other team? I said, what team are you talking about? I don't, I don't play sports. What do you mean? He's like, no, no, I, you know. He's like, you know, you got a fiance that's a woman. He says, I mean, you ever bad for the other team? I'm like, oh. I'm like, nope. No, I, said, I don't. Oh I can't say anyone that does, but no, this guy most certainly does never, never bad for the other team. He's like, Oh my it's God. too bad. He's like, you sure I can't like persuade you? I'm like, I'm, I'm positive. I said, <laughs> I feel flattered, you know. I said, I said, hey, well, I'll see you later. I, I got to go. And I went the other way, and Cherry comes out of her meeting. I said, well, how was it? And she's like, oh, it's good. You know, what'd you do? I'm like, sorry, but I think I accidentally went on a date with a man while you were in. <laughs> what? <laughs> I thought we were laughing, so that's what happened. This guy thought we were on a date, I guess. Did you actually eat the meal together? Oh, yeah. He said, I have wine, sitting across, you know, candle lit. Because you know, it's just a nice restaurant, you know. Did he pay the bill? No, no. We we went Dutch on this. If he went Dutch. He okay, that's good. I've been like, oh, thanks, man. It's very kind of you. But no, no, we, we went Dutch on this date. But yeah, I don't know. Wait, that but, is hilarious. I've never had anyone ask me that, you know, like, you ever bad for the other team? We were just telling our Uber driver that in LA while he's driving us around somewhere. He's like, What? <laughs> he's like, Bad for the other team? At 12 o'clock in the afternoon, no less. Man, he was, right? he, he, was, was he was something. He was on a mission for some TV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, that's my story. I'll let Sherry take back over. <laughs> All right. Yay. <laughs> a little humor. <laughs> This is total, that's totally non-productive business material, but we promised, so. <laughs> Real confidence booster, though, right? Yeah, I know, right? I mean, you're handsome enough to be invited on a date at a really nice Italian restaurant. That's right. Yep. Yep. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to, like, go through real quick. We had this speaker. Her name is Susan O'Malley. Um, Beachbody... Yeah paid her $35,000 for one hour of speaking time, <laughs> by the way. Isn't that ludicrous? I'm like, what? Oh my God. Okay, so she's the first female president in a sports franchise. So she was the female in a male-dominated field. 
And she was kind of just sharing her struggles about what she went through. Um, and, and then she's had what, I think eight points. Yeah. Eight rules, eight rules, um, to be successful. And, um, you know, against all adversity or whatever. I'm only going to go through four of them today because I don't, it's already starting to get late. I don't want to um, take this too long. Um, but her first rule, which is really hilarious, and, you know, uh, and, but it's true, she said, my rule number one. Ready? Make your bed every day. <laughs> and we're all like, like, what? What do you mean? Like, what does that matter? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, we're paying for 35 grand for this. <laughs> but really, um, so make your bed every day. But she said, if you, if you know, it doesn't matter, you know, wake up and make your bed. And then if you're having the crappiest day on the planet or a terrible day, at least when you go to bed, you come, you get into a nice made. <laughs> bed <laughs> and she said it just makes everything better um, she said when you make your bed in the morning it kind of sets you up for you know doing all the other things that you're supposed to be doing yep. and and just a daily discipline that the like, daily discipline exactly. it sets the thermostat you know for the rest of your day of, okay i'm going to continue doing the things i know i need to be doing that's the idea right Okay, rule number two, plan your work, work your plan. You have got to plan ahead of time for your day ahead. So she suggested doing a to-do list for, your, for the next day. That was one of her suggestions. So she said, don't do your to-do list the morning of. You should have your to-do list for the next day already done. So that's planned out. And then prioritize it. Um, the thing that you don't want to do the most, you have to do first. Um, and establish a clear timeline for this list. So, you know, there's going to be stuff that you, you can't do till late at night or whatever. Um, just make sure you have that timeline set. Um, and then a quote that I actually found on the web because you know, I was trying to prepare for this was really cool. Inch by inch, it's a cinch. So make things manageable. And that's basically a roadmap to success. I love that quote. Inch by inch is a sin. If you just take it down and break it down, break that to-do list down, you know, inch by inch, it's, it looks a lot better than having a big long list ahead of you. <laughs> Did you say <laughs> inch? Inch by inch is a sin? A cinch. Oh, a cinch. Okay. Yep, inch by inch, it's a cinch. Yeah, and what I want to add is like, you know, people that are successful, whatever they do at their chosen field, they don't wander aimlessly throughout the day. You know, a lot of people, they just get up, they don't, you know, it's like, well, I guess I'm going to work. And then, you know, and they kind of just like let life happen to them and whatever comes their way, comes their way. I don't know how to mute myself. Okay. Planes coming. <laughs> dog okay. The, uh, but, I mute myself. Like, and plus, when you go to bed at night four, I mean, how many times? Because I know this has happened to me many times. I'm sure I'm not the only one. You're laying in bed. You're like thinking about all these things you got to do the next day. Like, oh my gosh, I got to do that. I can't forget to do that. I got to do this. Oh, I know I'm gonna forget that. I know it. But if you, you know, the night before, before you go to bed, if you write down, okay, this is everything I can think of. I got to do tomorrow. I'll prioritize it later. But you get it all down on paper. Then you can rest easy when you lay down on bed. You sleep like, better. I got this written down. You know, yeah. it's good. And it's, it's just, you know, you can rest better. Then you wake up and you already have some kind of a purpose to your day. You make your bed and then you go over your list and you figure out, you know, you prioritize what you're going to do. And so it's just a good way to live. Yes. On purpose, you know, by design. So. Okay. Number three was outwork everybody. <laughs> and that's you know that's that's good um she said to outwork your fears so and then outwork your opponent so outworking your fears how do you think you do that doing more personal development than your you know whoever you're trying to you know compete with, compete with. Yeah. um if they do you know a half hour if you know they do a half hour of personal development a day then do an hour just outwork your fears with personal development and outwork your opponent. 
Um, like the example she gave for that is Larry Bird, the basketball player. He was not a good basketball player. <laughs> he said he was just average. And in how he got to be the best basketball player is he simply outworked his opponent. Yep, she said she'd be on the sideline and, you know, he's standing out there in the same spot, you know, his sweet spot that he was known for, just, you know, a thousand balls. A thousand kept, free throws. Yeah, just kept at it. And uh, she's like, you know, why are you doing it? You're already in the NBA. He's like, you know, he's like, because this is why I'm here. You know, I, I just outwork everyone else. Yep. He was constantly improving himself and, and doing those things. So, you know, that's what made him at the top of his game. He outworked everyone else. Right. And, and that's also why she was able to be the first woman president of a professional sports franchise because she was always the first one to work, was the last one to leave. She just she outworked everyone else. Yep. She, she just had a work ethic that had no stop to it. And uh, that helped her, you know, tremendously. So. There's that quote, if you can't beat them, outwork them. Yeah. It, and it's true. You just, the more work you do, the better you're going to get and the better you're going to be against them. Okay, so number four, this is the last one I'm going over for tonight because it's getting late on the call. Um, and, and I have not even done this for our team yet, which is really bad. I was going to um, be asking you guys for input on this, but she said set expectations and you have to have a vision for your team. So I want to create a vision for our team. I want you guys to know, you know, where we're going and I want input from, you know, where do you, what do you think? Like, where do you think, you, you know, we need to go? What do you, you know, what is your vision for this? And, and I want to put together, you know, an actual vision and post it somewhere, I don't know, in the files or something. Um, I just want a clear cut expectation of where we're going. I know my vision, but I want it to be the team. I want it to be a team vision. I don't want it just to be my vision. You know, I want to include everybody because we're a team and we're not going to get anywhere if we don't work together as a team. So um, she stated, she said that, you know, that, you know, your team or whoever you're working for or working with cannot read your mind. And that's so true. Like you guys can't read my mind. I can't read your mind. So we need to talk about it. I don't know how I'm going to go about doing that, but maybe I'll just start a thread and ask for input and, you know, come up with something good. For I, for, our team. I forget what analogy she said about I that. I can't remember It was either. really good, though. I, I can't remember. I but, yeah, she came up with something good. Something like it was an example, something that happened to her. She was, like, in her office and how, like, people misunderstand each other. You know, like she says one thing, but they hear another because she's not clearly – clearly communicating the vision of what she meant, you know, and then like, it didn't happen. She got really mad at him. Remember? Oh, it was the guy who cheered for the other team. Oh yeah. 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 That's oh yeah. It. Yeah. Okay, no, you, you just tell him. Okay. Tell him. What happened was, uh, so she was at a game. Oh, uh, she was doing yeah. intern internships. internships. She was the first one doing internships ever for NBA franchises. So yeah, she had this intern there and they went up to Boston garden, which she said was, uh, the worst possible uh, <laughs> venue ever. <laughs> but that's another story. She was hilarious. But anyway, they were there sitting there, sitting there, you know, and every time, you know, like the boss of people scored, this intern was like, yes, you know, and because he was a boss of it. And she's like, oh, no, you didn't. You know, she's like, <laughs> cheering yeah, for the so, other team. So, like, she's like, you're fired from this volunteer <laughs> position that you're not getting paid for, you're fired. So next day, uh, he comes walking by the office. He's like, and, you know, and she was like, she was thinking, you know, he's like, oh, you know, he was all proud coming in. Like, the president wants to talk to me. You know, this is great. <laughs> I'm just living. He walks in. He's like, yes. And uh, she's like, clear your desk out. <laughs> and, uh, he's like, what? He said, what did I do? He says, you were cheering for the other team. You know, and she's like, he's like, I didn't know that I had to be a fan of this team to be an intern here. I've been a fan of them my whole life. I, I didn't know. You know, I didn't mean anything by it. And, you know, I'll do my best to help this franchise. And then she, she said, uh, you know what? You have a good point. She said, I have never made that clear. She said, so she wrote it down as part of the internship program. Like, 
You can never cheer for the other team ever. She said she came up with a list of 10 rules right. for interns, and number 10 was you will always cheer for the home for the, team. For the home team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no matter what. And uh, but and she said that was her, you know, that was her fault because she didn't create that expectation or create that vision for her interns. And she's like, right. people don't know, you know, things like that. Something that might irritate you or upset you. You just simply have never communicated to them. You just have to, you know, let them know. That's not how I'm running things. You know, it's not, you know, agreeable to me. <laughs> you can't do that if you want to be on my team or, or whatever, you know, whatever the case might be. You know, like if you have someone on your team fat shaming or something, they might not know better. They might, you know, they might have grown up that way. They might, it's like, uh -uh. no one on my team is going to behave that way. That's not the way we conduct ourselves, you know, and they're like, oh, Okay, you know, I'm, I'll learn, you know, I'm teachable. So I'm, I'm just throwing out a hypothetical, but you never know, you know, what might seem completely normal for you, that would be totally inappropriate for someone to do, it might be normal for them. You just have to, you know, ex express yourself and create yeah. that vision. We've all seen those um, coaches who their pages are filled with um, not so good stuff. <laughs> that would be another thing, like, you know, if you're actually trying to work the business and not just doing it as a discount, you probably should watch what you're posting. You know, I swear, because people know that that's me, but I'm just talking about like, you know, like he said, fat shaming or, you know, using the bad N word that, you know, I've seen people use sometimes. I'm like, that is just bad business. So, you know, just because when people just don't know, so you have to set the expectations clear. So that is it for tonight. Anybody have any questions or anything you want? You can unmute yourself and ask. Otherwise, I'm just going to, we're going to end. I, can, I couldn't hear. Terry was mouthing something. Did you mouth something, Terry? I couldn't hear you. I'm good? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys. Thanks for coming tonight. See you next week. Night.